We let one of our hives go completely untreated for varroa mites this summer in order to show people what's likely to happen. As you can see, this hive appears to be very strong. It has two supers on, though they never got full, while other hives did fill up their supers. It seems to be a booming, healthy hive in many respects. In order to do a mite count, we need a sample of bees. We need some bees from the brood chamber. So let's get those samples from brood frames. Shake it into a basin. We've already got a Varroa Easy Check ready with some alcohol in it. The bees in the basin will be measured and put into the alcohol. And that will make the mites fall off of the bees. There are three mite sampling jars here because we were also doing other projects with this hive. We'll just show the alcohol wash right now. Whenever we do an alcohol wash on a bee sample of 300 bees, what we're hoping for is less than a 2% infestation. If it's 2% or more infestation, then we would treat to kill those mites. Now remember, we were allowing this hive to crash in order to film what it looks like. We've got 48 mites here, eight times the amount that would normally cause a person to treat. And this hive looks fine to the untrained eye. These two folks have a lot of experience picking up worker bees to put into queen cages they decided to pick up some worker bees and see if they had mites on their bellies. The underside of bees is the preferred place for mites to latch on. And this is one of the reasons that you usually do not see mites on your bees. The other reason being that over half of the mites in a hive are inside brood cells, breeding and hiding out. Now we're revisiting this same hive three weeks later and it looks terrible. Right away we can see there aren't enough bees here, and this hive did not swarm. Some of this brood died in its cells, and the bees are trying to chew it away in order to remove it. It may have died because of lack of bees to keep the brood warm. It may have died because of varroa in the cells with it. This here is a complete pupa. You can see the eyes slightly pink and there's one to the right of it. We shouldn't see the faces of bees developing. At that stage, they should be capped. So something is wrong here. That's called bald brood. In this area, we do have some brood that's fine, even tiny, tiny larvae. And that proves the queen was here recently. Let's pull another frame and look at it. Well, let's look deep down into the hive here at first. There's no bees down there in that bottom box. Can you see all the way through to the screen bottom board? There's just been a real drop in population in the past three weeks. But there aren't any dead bees here. The bees are dying away from the hive. One of the things that viruses do to bees is it messes up their ability to orient and remember. So they find it hard to get back to their own hives. We've just spotted a really bad sign. Mites riding on the backs of bees. This is something that you see at the end of a colony's life. There's so many mites in this hive that they can't find room under the bees' bellies in their preferred spots to latch on and feed.
When honeybees live with varroa mites parasitizing them for months, they seem to be fine up until the time that the colony crashes. And that means that many, many worker bees die around the same time. The viruses normally present in a hive take hold and get worse when the hive is stressed by the presence of varroa mites. These viruses affect the bees' ability to navigate, digest their food, feed the baby bees, control their muscles, among other problems. Viruses even affect the queen and the drones. Don't let this happen to you. Check your mite levels at least once every three weeks using alcohol wash and treat when your mite levels reach six mites per 300 bees. Please.